Are you going to be losing performance when you are going to upgrade from Windows 10 to Windows 11? Hey guys, Roman here from Game Guides, and in this video, I'm going to answer exactly that question. Uh, more specifically, I'm going to be looking at Battlefield 2042, Modern Warfare 3, um, Cyberpunk 2077, as well as Rainbow Six Siege, and try to figure out whether in any of these titles I can see higher or lower performance after upgrading to Windows 11. Now I should mention here that I didn't actually do an upgrade of my system, but instead I performed a full, fresh and clean install of Windows 11. So let's begin with the game that I'm currently playing the most, which is Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3. As you can see from this graph, I'm getting roughly 4% higher performance both on the average FPS as well as on the 1% lows using the in-game benchmark. Note that I'm not really using any of the low, medium or high presets that the game ships with, but instead I'm using my optimized best settings for Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3, which if you're interested in, you can check out using this link in the card right now. And with that, I have kind of a mix between high, medium and low settings in order to get sort of the highest possible performance and the best visual quality. But just know that this mix of performance at 1440p results in these performance numbers. Moving on to Rainbow Six Siege, which I tested here at ultra settings, again at 1440p. And here the difference is not even close. Windows 11 wins by a huge margin of 25% on the average FPS and 35% on the 1% lows. So if Rainbow Six Siege is your primary game that you are mainly playing, then upgrading to Windows 11 is certainly a good idea. By the way, if you guys are also interested in how productivity tasks are affected from moving from Windows 10 to Windows 11, then check out this video I have linked in the card right now, where I'm going into a deep dive of the Affinity Suite. I'm looking at um, Handbrake render times, I'm looking at DaVinci Resolve render times, where again I compare the performance of Windows 10 to Windows 11. Moving on to Battlefield 2042, which for this test I actually used medium settings at 1440p once again. And here I'm seeing actually quite an interesting behavior as the average performance seems to be roughly 4% higher on Windows 11 compared to Windows 10, whereas the 1% lows seem to drop quite significantly by roughly 7%. Now this behavior is not exclusive to Battlefield 2042, it actually also happens in other games. So for this last part of today's video, I want to move on to the performance that I saw in Cyberpunk 2077. For this, I'm not just looking at one graphical preset, but we're looking at the medium, the ultra, as well as ultra preset with ray tracing enabled. Evidently, while the average FPS seems to be ever so slightly higher in Windows 11, the 1% lows, or in this case it's actually the minimum FPS that the game reports because this is how the benchmark works, but regardless we can see that the minimum FPS is completely tanked when moving over to Windows 11. Now at first I really couldn't figure out what the problem was here and I also didn't have time to do more in-depth testing when I did these performance benchmarks roughly four months ago now. Uh, so I just left it there, but I really wasn't happy with just ending the video on such a weird result and therefore I had to investigate a little bit further to try to figure out why we get such low 1% lows on Windows 11. So after a little bit digging online, um, I found that the likely culprit for this um, behavior was probably resizable bar. So just today I actually redid the performance benchmark in Cyberpunk, but this time with resizable bar disabled. Now while I show these results side by side here, please keep in mind that for Windows 10, resizable bar obviously was enabled. But just to give you kind of an impression of what happens when you turn off resizable bar, you can see that the minimum FPS get a huge boost in performance, whereas the average FPS might see a slight reduction. So clearly there is something quite wrong when it comes to resizable bar and Windows 11. However, this only applies to certain games, as we actually did see higher performance performance both on the averages and on the 1% lows in Modern Warfare 3 and Rainbow Six Siege. However, this entire topic of the resizable bar and its influence on gaming performance should be the topic of their own dedicated videos for specific games and if you're interested in a video like that, then let me know in the comments down below. 
So in summarizing this video, if you're thinking about upgrading from Windows 10 to Windows 11, it's generally not really an issue. But if you're unlucky, you might encounter a quite significant increase in the stutteriness of your gaming experience after moving over to Windows 11, as is seen by the 1% lows or minimum FPS that I showed in this video. And if this is the case, then my advice would be to disable resizable bar. But besides that, my recommendation when it comes to whether or not you should upgrade your gaming system from Windows 10 to Windows 11 would be that it is generally safe to do so. You're certainly not going to see a huge drop in performance when moving to Windows 11 as other channels have reported in the past, but you're more likely to actually see a slight boost in performance. Now, if you think about upgrading to Windows 11 and you want to make a full clean install, then definitely check out this video right here, where I'm going step by step through the process of making all the backups, extracting your Windows key, burning Windows 11 onto a USB drive, booting into that, then installing Windows 11, as well as some quite important tips on how to properly set up the new Windows 11 installation. But that's it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful day and I'll see you guys in the next video.